okay with you mean? Oh. Kathy, the the last time. I she actually thought so. like, no, I'm home. Yeah. He's like, why? And I was like, <laughs> I don't know. Um, any other RR? There were a couple of you who gave me RR number six this morning. Anybody else got one done for me? I'm so confused. An RR number six. Okay, okay. six numbers. It's just confusing. Okay, if we have time at the end, then I'll help you out. Um, okay, so. If you would please find your packet that says 3 1. And you also want to have your grapher out. There may be things that are helpful to us on so your grapher next to me. You will absolutely positively need your grapher. Oh, by the way, I didn't get a chance to didn't watch the video on Friday. You didn't hear that I won the videos instead of Kurt. They're not up yet. I have to make the video for Wednesday and Friday, but I will do that. You won the yes. video. The video is that you guys want to be the It's not going to be the one doing the video. No. No. God. I'm going for a moment. Honestly. What? I'm going for it. Good luck. With that. That. You've been there, done that, and probably to work for it. It did not go there. Me? Yeah. Oh, it didn't go out. Yeah, yeah you both did. have been there. Yeah, you both have been there. You both have done that. And well, you both know how much I time have an is. excuse. Oh, it is bad for I went there. to Texas with my aunt, and I was spending time with her. So I didn't have time for certain work. Yeah, okay. But you were right. remote after you came back from Texas. <laughs> no. Yeah. Well, I was remote during Texas. What? You didn't want to get in Texas. My point has been. All right, I want to see. I'm, I'm playing with something real quick for, with Oliver. Oliver, you're going to help me out. It's not eye level yet, but I'm trying to get it to be less of a glare. But I still need you to be able to see the screen. What's it look like, Oliver? It looks good. Still a glare? Yeah. Where? Same place? Yeah. Is when it's lower? See, it's just that stupid thing, and I don't know how to fix that. All right. If I put tape over, you can't see your goofball. We tried that on Friday. We tried it. And what if we try it on Monday? Yeah. It's no different. All right. So I'm going to, Oliver, I'm going to move you back down to where you were because, frankly, this box is going to drive me crazy. Hi, Oliver. Right now, it's just Oliver. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Let's try one more thing, Oliver. The angle's going to be funky, but maybe because I changed the angle. Oh, right next to <laughs> How's the glare? I think it's better. It's still like it's covering number two. Okay. So, oh. we like right here. so we can't get rid of the glare. I tried. What if we move it farther back? Oh, I tried. Now we're just going to go. Okay. Number one, which of the following is the value of the polynomial? Okay, so what do you got to do? Um, find so the two. Yeah, you just go through. No, 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 no. Uh -huh. Find the value. Uh, and they tell you x is 10. Oh, okay. Would you pack one in? Oh, no. So you just plug it in? Because it's in that mess of a back. Yep. His back is so good. <laughs> <laughs> How do you even know you need that? He does. Because I can put paper. So we just plug it in. Yeah, just plug it in. Okay. I don't have time to sit here and find it. So we're just going to give you a hope nobody needs it because that's my last one. Um, now, it technically says without your calculator. You guys realize that it's probably actually more work with your calculator than it is without? Because the, the X is a 10. So yeah. that number oh, is 30. That number is... No, because it's x, it's x squared. Oh, I was just making. So 10 squared is? A thousand. No. A hundred times two is 200. 10 to the third power is? 1,000 times four is 4,000. Plus seven. 1,237. You can. That's fine. But for me, it's easier to do it without, actually. Number two, which of the following is a polynomial expression? What do you think? Um, what are you doing? 
I will see someone. Number two. Number two is the polynomial expression. You got it. Number three is um, exponential, which we already talked about this year. Wait, what? Because of the exponent being x. Number three, we're not allowed to get variables on the bottom and call it a polynomial. And number four, you can't get, you don't know this yet, but the exponent on that is a one half, which is a no go. Correct. If it's got a square root, in it, a square root in it, that is not a polynomial. Okay, sum. What are you going to do? Add. You're going to add them. Go. Oh, no. Stop looking. Don't do that. Did you say that last week? I did, that's why I just threw it out. I just took it last week and then I didn't think anything about it. But now I did. I know, it was like a green one. See, it says dark enough for you to see. You should do every time someone comes without a pencil, you give them like two questions of homework. Oh. So I have a pencil, have I just don't know where it is. That's 8x and 2x? 10x squared. 10x squared. Automatically it's that one. I don't have to go any further. That would be a subtraction. That would be multiplication. And the problem with that one is you don't add your exponents when you're just adding. When you're just combining like terms, your exponents do not Correct. Number four, the product of the monomial and the binomial is equivalent to. Okay, so first of all, product means what? Multiply. Okay. Please, please, please. This is one of those things. Anytime you have something more than a monomial. So in this case, we have a binomial. Please put that in parentheses. What are you going to do? Yes, you're going to distribute. Oliver, can you see that green marker or no? Yes. Okay. Go ahead, distribute. Think about what you do with your exponents when you are multiplying. I also need to pack it from last week. So that I can go through credit for things that are done. Okay, you ready? Or not yet? Yeah. Yes? Okay. What do I do with the negative 2 and the 4? Multiply them. What's negative 2 times 4? Negative 8. What do I do with the 3 and the 2? Add them. 3 plus 2 is 5. Good. Then I have negative 2 times... Negative 2, negative times a negative is a positive. There is no x here. So what do I do? Uh, yeah, I just put that one there. Oops, I didn't put the 4 yet. There's nothing to change it, so it just comes along. Good? So what's our choice? Choice 4? Good. If the length of a rectangle is represented by x plus 8, and its width is represented by 2x plus 3, then its area could be expressed as which is the following. Okay, how do you find the area of a rectangle? Length times width. Length times width. So I got to take these two things and I have to multiply them by each other. Yes? Okay. Is this more than one thing? Yeah. Is this more than one thing? So I want them both in parentheses. What is that? What is it? What did you say, Mary? Foil. Foil. Yeah, this is foil. Binomial times a binomial is for
Isn't eight times three twenty-four? <laughs> I put eleven at first. Oh, I picked the right answer. Yeah. Whoopsies. Thanks. Yeah. So you care about the right answer, but you <laughs> two thirds of it was right. I do. You yeah. know. That's a very you guys thing. That's what happens when I hang out with eighth graders for twenty years. <laughs> yeah. Can I get rid of this? Yeah. Yeah, are you good? And I'm going to get rid of this one, and I'm going to leave that there for Addie, but I'm going to go switch the page. We should already have for this, and then gold group should have to do the other half, so we're not just giving gold group the answer. This is the thing. If they don't do it along with us later, because Oliver's the only one doing it along with us now, I'm going to be able to tell them their test, but they're not going to get me through. If all they do is go through and have the answer, I'm going to know. I can tell. I can tell who practices on their IA that they're supposed to be practicing on because if you didn't practice, then chances are you're not going to be able to answer those questions. Okay. All right. Which of the polynomial results from squaring the binomial x minus 4? Okay, what the heck does that mean? What's squaring it mean? Two. The little two outside, the exponent of two, right? Is that more than one thing? Yeah. Yes. So we're going to put in parentheses. Okay. I do not ever, 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 and I think I've said this to you before, ever want you to try and do it this way. Because I'll tell you right now, most of you are going to try and tell me that the answer is number one, and it absolutely is not. When you see this, I would much rather you do this. Because again, that's another FOIL question. If you do it right from that top, you're going to forget the middle term. Ms. Fro, do you have a favorite student? No. Yeah. Yeah. Why did Matt try to I, tell you that it's him? Because he tries to tell the whole kids that all the time. Mm -hmm. I think I was the only It would definitely be me. Like, I'm the full package. <laughs> <laughs> what? Exactly. Funny, smart, handsome. <laughs> you do realize we're talking about students. Yeah. So those 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 things should not really be on my radar as far as students go. Why would you say you were okay until you crossed that line? Okay, x times x is x squared. X times negative four. Negative four x. Negative four times x. And then negative times a negative. 16, right, Seth? 16? <laughs> yeah. So it looks like my answer is three. No. Four? Four? Yeah. Please be careful because that's another very eighth grade thing to do. Oh, I got an X, I got an 8, I got a 16. Okay, I got an X, I got an 8, I got a 16. That must be it. Oh, no. Wait. <laughs> that's not the sign I get there. So just pay attention to that. That's equally as important as the number. Okay, which of the following expressions is equivalent to that hot mess? All right, well, first of all, what do I have to do first? Yes, first thing you got to do is you got to foil this side and you got to foil this side. That, well, it actually isn't because you guys look at these. These are conjugate pairs. And what happens in our conjugate pairs? The middles disappear. So it's only the first and the last that you have to do. So x times x is x squared. x squared. And 5 times negative 5 is negative 25. That first one's done. Now, could I have foiled it? If I don't look at that immediately and go, oh, hey, that's a conjugate pair, then yeah, I would foil it. Foiling it's going to get you the same answer. I know that's why I'm saying that to you, because I know that you said that last time. Can I just foil it? Absolutely you can. 
nothing wrong with it. All right, so, but as long as I'm here helping you, let's save ourselves a little time. X times X is? X squared. X squared. Two times negative two is? Minus four. Negative four. Okay, now we need to just add those two things. So X squared plus X squared is? Two, two. two X squared. Okay, so then I can get rid of these two. Uh, negative 25 plus negative four? Negative. Okay. So my answer is number one. Number 10, which of the following is the greatest common factor of those two monomials? So all you have to do is figure out which of those is the GCF. Honestly, it's just as easy probably to go through the choices as it is to try and come up with it by yourself. Is 5 the GCF for the number parts? 10 and 15. Okay. So I know it can't be 2 and I know it can't be 3. Now when we look at our variables. We have x squared there. We have just plain old x here. So how many can we take? One. Just one. You have to be able to take the same number from both. So it's basically the lowest one. Well, that's an x1 and that's an x1. So, so far that doesn't help us. We have y to the fifth and we have y to the third. What can we take? Three. Y to the third. So our correct answer is number three. Now I got to go move it up again. Which of the following shows this binomial factored incorrectly? I would absolutely go through the choices this time. Don't try to guess, because there's so many different ways that they could have factored it incorrectly. We could be here forever. So just real quick, 10 times x to the third, is that 10x cubed? I'm going through our choices. Oh, wait, I was looking at 10. <clears throat> is 10 times x cubed 10x cubed? Yeah. Yep. Is 10 times 4x 40x? Yeah. Yep, so that one works. So it's not what we're looking for because we're looking for the incorrect one. Um, how about 5x squared times 2x? Yeah. yeah. That's good. That's yeah. 10x cubed. What about 5x squared times 8? No. No, because that's 40x squared, not 40. So that's the incorrect one. And finally, number 10, which of the following is not, again, a factor of the binomial. Okay, so is there a GCF? That is there a GCF with the variable? Two. Not two. No, just one of them, because that one only has one. Okay. So our GCF is 7x. So I'm going to go through, and I'm going to divide it out. Okay, when I take a 7x out of 7x squared, what am I left with? X. When I take a 7x out of 28x, what am I left with? 4. Okay, is 7 a factor? Is 7 one of the things that you multiply together to get this answer? Yeah. Yep, there's the 7. And it's being multiplied, correct? Yep. Okay. Is x a factor? Yeah. Yep, right there. That's being multiplied. Is this x minus 4 or is this just negative 4? Four? Four. That's x minus 4. You can't break this apart because of the parentheses. That has to stay together as a factor. And that's why it's not negative 4 there. Wait, wait, why is that not a factor? Good thing you guys are paying attention. And no less it was eight. Right? I'm impressed now, Lucas. Wait, you chose number one. I accidentally yeah, chose number one because halfway through the problem, I switched to what is the right yeah, answer. Like, oh, I, like like I chose number four. Good job. And then I just hear. Here's the right answer. I was like, Yeah, that's the right answer. You have a least favorite student? No, definitely me. The one that I chose. I'm her favorite. That's probably it. Yeah. All right, we're still on. Number 11. Oh, yeah, there's, it technically goes on the back side of this page and then onto a next page. But we're, this one is one we're not. It's not on the test. We will do it at some point, but not today. And because it's not on the test, it might be our, like, our introduction next week, Sunday. All right, number 11. The binomial x squared minus 64 can be written equivalently as. 
there's a couple of ways to do it. First of all, you know, I hope you know that if you have something that's two terms and they're both perfect squares, that started with a conjugate pair. But if you don't know that, then the other option is go through and FOIL all of these. Yeah, it's going to take you a little longer. But go through and FOIL them, and you're going to see that the correct answer is choice two. 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 Because how do I get x squared, x times x? How do I get 64, 8 times 8? That last sign is a negative, which means I need different signs. Different signs is what makes that middle piece disappear for us. That middle term, that x term, goes away. If you do this, you'll have a middle term. If you do this, you'll have a middle term. And if you do that, you'll have a middle term. That's the only one that gets them to disappear. Number 12, the trinomial 2x squared minus 3x minus 20 can be factored as the product of x minus 4 and which of the following binomials? Okay, so you tell me. Lucas. Okay, yes. So when you say middle term, I mean, technically trinomials have three terms. There isn't an X term in that one because of the fact that a positive 8X and a negative 8X disappear and turns into zero. Okay. Right, the whole conjugate thing. Um, two ways to do this. Is this a regular unfoil or a slip and slide unfoil? That would be a slip and slide. If you're comfortable with slip and slide, then I would say that's going to make your life easier. You're not comfortable with slip and slide, then what I would do is I would take this in one set of parentheses and I would go through and choice by choice by choice by choice foil it out to see which one actually turns out to be this. I'm going to slip and slide if you're okay with that. How do I start slip and slide, Isaiah? What do I do with this too? Uh oh. Seth, full, help him. He's not the full package. Uh, you times I, T times one. Yes. I slip it to the back. And I multiply those and I get negative 40. You guys really better pay attention to me because I've already made two mistakes. So keep an eye on me this morning. No, the no, one no. Lucas caught me on. <laughs> oh, I thought you were talking about this equation. I was like, how do you already have that? You just rewrote down the equation. Oh, yeah, no, no. Not in this <laughs> problem. It's this morning, collectively. Okay. Now what do I do, Maddie? Yeah, it's just regular on foil now. Once you've, once you've slipped that two, that leading coefficient to the back side, you have regular on foil. Lucas, what's my first sign? Negative. Very good. Now, the second sign, Lucas, is this says I need a negative 40 at the end of this problem. So if this is a negative, what does that have to be so that I end up with a negative? Good. Okay, Ken's, what do I need? Factors of what that do what to give me what? Factors of 40 that subtract to negative 3. Perfect. Okay, oh, that's 8 and 5. Yeah. Okay, which one do I want to go first? 8. Because of how I taught you to do the signs, the bigger one needs to go first. All right, so we're almost done, Eddie. But now we need to slide that 2 back out of there. How do we do it? If we multiplied it in to begin with, then now we have to we have to divide it out. And we have to divide it out of both numbers because both of those were used to get there. This one simplifies nicely. 8 divided by 2 is 4. What about this guy? 2 plus 5. Yep. Put that 2 out in front. 2x plus 5. So x minus 4 is the first one they gave us. The other binomial is choice. No, no. Very good. I'm going to tell you honestly, number 13 is one of the ones that gives me the biggest scare because it should be an easy place for you to get points that kids goof up all the time. Um, what's special about subtracting? Yeah, you have to keep change, change. You have to add the opposite. Everything after the minus sign, well, everything including the minus sign, has to change. The minus becomes a plus, and everything else after it changes to the opposite sign. 
there are a couple of you, I think most of them are gold day, but there are a couple of you who just do straight up subtraction. That's fine. Just make sure you do it correctly. So also read the words. Find the difference when this is subtracted from this. Which one is my starting problem? Yes, this one. 2x squared plus 4x plus 1 is my starting problem. My second one, the thing I'm subtracting from it, is this. Do you guys like to stack or do you like to just leave it out in one big long? Lucas, it's with us. You like to stack it? Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to stack it, but I'm going to change the sides at the same time. Is that okay? Yes, no, maybe? Yeah. Okay. So I'm going to make the minus a plus. I'm going to make the negative 5a positive 5. I'm going to make the positive 3a negative 3. And I'm going to make the positive 8a negative 8. And then I'll go through and I'll do it. 2x squared plus 5x squared? 7x squared. 4x minus 3x? 1x or x. And 1 minus 8? Negative 7. Please, please, please. I can't remember. I think there's at least one subtraction one on the actual test. I'm not sure if it says subtracted from, so you're going to have to read it carefully. Consider the product of x squared, or sorry, x plus 2 times x minus 3. Write this product in simplest trinomial form. What do they want you to do? They want you to FOIL it. Go. Skipping over parts B and C. So once you have it foiled, quick check at the front board to make sure you have the same answer as me. Alright, this is where things start to get a little bit crazy. I think up until now, things have been pretty normal. Yes? Anybody need to spend any more time on number 14, part A? Did everybody get x squared plus 5x plus 6? Sweet. Lucas, did you get that? Okay. This is where things start to get a little crazy. And it's all good thinking. <sighs> Sometimes I make the call that, yeah, it's good thinking, but it's not something that we need to spend time on. Like the last problem, B and C. It's good thinking. I don't think we need to spend the time on it. So number 15 says, write the product below in standard polynomial form. Show the steps that you use in simplifying the product. Okay. So this is something that you could see. What the heck are you going to do? Thoughts? We can't combine them because they're not pluses or minuses. Could you boil the first two terms and then that's what that's what I would do. What I would do is I would go and I would foil the first two terms. Then it's gonna be remember that one day where we had big multiplication going on, it was like a really big foil problem. That's what we're gonna have to do with the second part. Well you kind of you must what's the word? Subliminally, you must, because you just told me exactly what oh. to do. So even if you don't remember. Whoa. Yeah, it's there. <laughs> you just don't realize it's What's there. What's that word mean? It means it's there. You just don't realize it's there. Yeah, what I just said. All right, so let's foil this first. What's x times x? X squared. X squared. What's x times negative 3? Negative 3x. What's 8 times x? 8x. 8x. What's 8 times negative 3? Negative 24. Okay, I would stop there. I would combine that together. Okay, so that combines, but I'm still going to keep this back here so that I remind myself I'm not done with the process. Negative 3 plus 8. Good. Now, it technically doesn't matter. 
for me, visually, it's easier to jump this binomial to the front of the problem than it is to leave it at the back. It's totally your call. If I jump it to the front, I'm going to have three and then three. If you leave it at the back, you're going to have to go one, two, then you have to go one, two, then you're going to have to go one, two. To me, it feels like more. So I'm going to take that 2x and I'm going to move it up here. And then you just take each part and do all three of them to it. So it's a little crazy. You ready? What's 2x times x squared? 2x cubed. 2x cubed. Perfect. Now I still go with that 2. That 2x has to go to everything in that second set of parentheses. So what's 2x times 5x? 10x squared. 10x squared. Good. And then what's 2x times negative 24? Negative 48x. Negative 48x. Perfect. Second one is kind of easy because you're multiplying by what? 1. So 1 times x squared is x squared. 1 times 5x is 5x. And 1 times negative 4 is negative 24. We would have gotten six terms either way. It just feels a little bit less this way because I only have to do it twice instead of three times through. All right, are you going to leave your answer like this? Yes. No. And the reason you're not is because of this. So we're going to combine everything and we need to make sure that the exponents are in decreasing order. So what's the biggest exponent up there? Is there any other x cubed to combine with it? Okay, so then I'm going to write 2x cubed. Okay, took care of that one. Okay, what about x squared? Are there x squared up there? More than one? Yes. Put them together. 10x squared and? 1x squared is 11x squared. Good. Okay. And I'll cross them out because I took care of them. What about plain old x's? There's two of them. There's negative 48x and there's positive 5x. So when I combine them, I get negative 43x and then constant negative 24. Done. That was a lot. Okay. I think 16 and 17 are along the same lines. 16 gives you a little bit more help in doing it. 17 just says, here, blah, go do it. Um, the other difference is that this is a subtraction and this is an addition. I believe that when we get to the actual test, I'm going to turn this one into a bonus. So I'm only going to worry about doing one of them with you. And that particular one would be number 16. So we're not going to, we're going to not worry about 17. The expression shown below can be written as the product of x plus 4 with another binomial. Determine that binomial. Show how you arrived at your answer. Right. Hey everyone, pardon the interruption. I realize we still have a few minutes left in class, but I needed to take a moment to recognize our February Student of the Month. Choice. So at this time, if I call your name, that means you were chosen by your teachers as Student of the Month for the month of February. And if you could please come down to the main office to receive your certificate and have your picture taken. Bailey Potter. Matthew Mathis. Mallory Cazzotti. Alexander Yankovic. And Logan Cast. Those are our Purple Day Student of the Month. If you could please come down to the office, the main office at this time. Thank you very much. Okay, so what I did is I looked at the two things. They both have an x plus 4 in them, correct? And the x plus 4 is a factor because it's in the parentheses. So what I did is I went and I took the x plus 4 out of it. Now, I would never normally do it that way. I did it that way because I couldn't talk over Mr. Fisher. But I was trying to show you that I went and I took the x plus 4 out of this piece. And I took the x plus 4 out of this piece. So what that left me with was x minus 2 plus x plus 7. 
well, what can I do with these guys? Yeah. I can combine them. X plus X is? 2X. Negative 2 plus 7 is? 5. There you go. We've done exactly what they told us to. They said write it as a product. We did. With another binomial. That's what that is. Yes, ma'am. Could you just fold in the two and then? It's a lot more work. A lot more work. Yes, probably, but a lot more work. So down here, you guys, what would I take out? I would take out x plus 5, and then I'd have 2x plus 11 minus x minus 2 that I would then have to combine. So you have a heads up. You have an idea of how to do it. All right, we're going to run out of time here. Number 19 is factor each of these completely. That's what we did on Thursday and Friday last week, or just Thursday because some of you handed in a completely blank page on Friday. So um, I would absolutely positively make sure that you have attempted these. I will tell you right now that they have a GCF before you either unfoil or conjugate pair them. Um, we probably can just go and I'll go until that bell rings and then once time is up, time is up. Do you have a GCF? Yeah. Yes, of what? Five. five. So if I take a five out, I have x squared minus 4x minus 21. Okay, what can I do inside those parentheses? What do we do, Ken? Unfoil? Is that what you said? Yeah, that's unfoil. Clean old unfoil. I'm going to just put the answer here so that hopefully we can get going. You write it down if you want, but go back and then check it over. Make sure you can get that again. This guy has a GCF of 3x. Be careful. There are a bunch of you who are not taking out a big enough variable when we were doing this. Okay, tell me what's in the parentheses there. I mean, I know it's x squared minus 25, but how do I, how do I break that down? What a, what's that going to look like? Yeah, that's your conjugate pair. When there's two terms, guys, that's what you should be thinking kind of almost immediately. This one has a GCF, but you're going to have to do slip and slide with it because the GCF is not 8. And this one, real quick, let me just show you. How do you get x to the fourth? Yes. This one's not done. Why not? Because both of these are conjugate pairs. This is x plus 3, x minus 3. And this is x plus 2, x minus 2. I believe there's one like that on the test. So just be aware. Look over it. Um, that should be enough to get you through. Have a lovely day. Next time I see you will be test time. If you have questions, send me emails. Come to Google Meets on, on Wednesday. Not Saturday. That's Wednesday. And I will see you later. Online kids, I'll see you later. Is Kurt married? Yes. And he has two children, apparently.